Hello friends, in today's video we're going to be discussing Kubernetes from a .NET developer point of view. We're going to be understanding the main components of a Kubernetes cluster, we're going to be seeing how all of these parts work, and then we're going to be seeing where does our .NET application fits into the picture, and how we can actually utilize Kubernetes in order for us to host our web application. Today we're not going to be jumping into the code, we're going to be understanding the full structure of it, and then in later video we're going to be seeing how we can actually deploy our .NET application to Kubernetes. I already have a video to do that, I'm going to be linking it here somewhere, but in future videos, I'm going to be diving a bit more deep to understand the exact process that we're going to be needing as .NET developers in order for us to deploy our applications to Kubernetes. So let's get started. So what I have here is I have a diagram of a Kubernetes cluster and this diagram is available thanks to the Kubernetes website. And basically we can see here that there is a lot of different items that's happening when it comes to a Kubernetes cluster. And this might be a bit overwhelming, but let's break it down step by step so we can understand what every component is, how does it work, where do we need it, and where does our application will live. As well, we're going to be delving into the different components that currently exist, understanding their meaning, and understanding how do they fit within the larger ecosystem of a Kubernetes cluster. So we're going to be starting first by the control plane, and I'm going to be zooming in a bit so we can actually see it and understand how does it work. So we can think about a control plane in a Kubernetes cluster as the brain of the full operation. The control plane, as its name suggests, controls the full Kubernetes cluster. And a control plane is formed of different components that are needed in order for it to run. And these components are separated into five different items. The control plane, as the name suggests, controls every single item within our Kubernetes cluster. It is the brain of the operation. And the control plane is formed of five different components. And these components work together in order for us to have the full structure that we need. So let's break down these components and understand what they do. So as we can see on top, we have something called CM and we have CCM. So what does this mean? So the CM stands for Control Manager and the CCCM stands for Control Cloud Manager. And this is basically how we can actually manage our Kubernetes cluster. So these are basically some of the built-in functionality that the Kubernetes cluster will need in order for it to run. When it comes to managing its resources, the services, the integrations, the different uh, management of the memories, etc., etc., all of that lives inside the Control Manager or the Control Cloud Manager. The main difference between them, the Control Manager is utilized whenever we're hosting our own server. So for example, if we created our own VPNs and we installed um, Kubernetes on those VPNs, this is where the control manager come into place. It will actually int integrate, it will actually work with those VMs in order for us to have the full control that we need of our Kubernetes cluster. The CCM if, uh, actually comes into place if we're actually utilizing a managed Kubernetes service on the cloud. So if we're using AKS, which is Azure Kubernetes Service, or we're utilizing EKS, which is Elastic Kubernetes Service on AWS. So it depends on which cloud provider we're using. And if we're using any cloud provider in order for us to get there, we'll use the CCCM. If we're using anything like a VM, um, we use the control manager and we can think about it as a resource manager and basically called a configuration manager for the Kubernetes cluster on that virtual machine or that cloud provider. So these are the main two. So the control manager in essence is responsible for maintaining the state of our Kubernetes cluster and it actually run under the Kubernetes daemons in order for it to have that full management of the states. Now we can see something that we have also called etcd. ETCD is basically our database within Kubernetes. So all of the different configurations, the different utilizations that we need, all of the secrets that we might be using will all live inside the ETCD. At the ETCD here is a key value pair. So it's a pretty simple types of database. It can be secured, it can be stored outside the Kubernetes cluster for redundancies. We can configure it in a, so many different ways, but basically we can think of the ETCD is basically our database or uh, our full data store that the Kubernetes cluster will rely on. Then we're gonna have the scheduler. And the scheduler is based on its name is scheduler we can give it some kind of a jobs we can give it some kind of a task to run a certain amount of time we can tell it to actually run certain application destroy certain application increase the load decrease the load depending on whatever information we have and all of that can be done through the scheduler and lastly we can see here that we have an api so what's the, what's the API does here? Basically the API here is our main interaction point with our Kubernetes cluster. So within a control plane in a Kubernetes cluster, we cannot directly communicate with a control 
manager or the cloud control manager. We cannot communicate directly with the ETCD or the scheduler. In order for us to do any changes to any of those, what we need to do is we need to communicate first with the API. So what the API here is basically our entry point to the Kubernetes cluster. It's the proxy that we use in order for us to communicate with those different components that currently exist within the cluster. And the API is where all of the configuration that we do, all of the YAML file that we write is being processed before it's actually being this, uh, utilized by the control plane in order for it to run. So our control plane is a five component structure. We can see that four of them are required, which is going to be the API, the scheduler, the ETCD, as well as a control manager. The only one which is not really required, which is the callout control manager. It's only required if we're actually hosting our Kubernetes cluster on the cloud. And this is why we have a dotted line between the API and the CCCM, while all of the other ones, we have a solid line between them. And this is in summary what the con control plane is. There's a lot of different configurations. There is a lot of different variables that we can set in. I have a video where I can go step by step in setting your own Kubernetes cluster, which I link here somewhere. And basically, once we understand these different items within a control plane, it will make it much more easy for us to understand where everything goes when trying to deploy anything to Kubernetes. So now that we have discussed the main point or basically one of the main components of a Kubernetes cluster, now let's go where actually all of the source code goes into, which is going to be the nodes. So the nodes, as we can see here, are the workhorses of a Kubernetes cluster. So we can think of a control plane as the brain of the operation. The nodes are basically the workforce that actually accomplish everything that the brain does. And with Within the nodes, we'll have two main items. We're going to have the kubelets and the queue proxies. So what are these and how do they work? So the queue proxy here is basically the networking interface that we're going to be using in order for us to manage the node, the actual node itself. So if you want to specify the number of containers that it runs, if you want to specify the number of resources, want to specify its lifespan, we're going to be utilizing the queue proxy. The kubelet is basically where we have our code deployed to. So inside the kubelet, where basically we have our containers running, we have all the different configuration for these containers running. And basically within those kubelets, we're going to have a lot of the different resources that our containers will need. Like for example, if you want temporary storage, some kind of networking will live inside the kubelet there. So these are the two main part of a node. The queue proxy also monitor all of the changes that's happening within the node. So for example, if there is any types of, if there's some sort of any malfunctioning container, if we're running out of resources, if for any reason the daemon for the containers has stopped working, if the health uh, if the health of the node is actually deteriorating, all of this information is, are being fed back to the, to the control plane, where the control plane basically execute certain commands either to remove the node completely or basically revive the node or basically re redeploy the containers. There's a lot of different ways where the actual control plane manage every node depending on the information that's being fed back from the queue proxy. And the queue proxy here works in conjunction with the control plane in order for it to make sure that the health of the node is actually where it needs to be and it will avoid having any types of downtime when, whenever we're trying to actually deploy anything into our Kubernetes cluster. So as we said, the kubelet is basically where the daemon for our containers will run, it's where our container will run, the networking of our containers will be there, and everything that we need is going to be utilized within our kubelet. And as we can see from this image, we have three different nodes. So in this scenario, we have configured Kubernetes to have one main control plane and three different worker nodes. And something I would like to emphasize here that usually within a Kubernetes cluster, you only have one single control plane. You can have that control plane spread around different servers, but in essence, they are a single control plane managing that single Kubernetes cluster. You cannot have multiple control plane managing different, different control planes managing the same Kubernetes cluster. You only have one brain in the operation, but you, have, you can have as many workers as you want, and you can have here as many nodes as you want. And those nodes can be scaled up, scaled down, create and removed based on our need and based based on our configuration that's going to be built into the Kubernetes cluster. So where does our code as .NET developers comes into place? So when we're creating our codes, so let's say here we have our .NET application. Once we have created our .NET application, we're going to be basically creating a Docker image. So once we have created our .NET application, what are we going to be doing? We're going to be actually containerizing our application into a Docker image. This Docker image can also work with Podman, but for the simplicity sake, we're just saying a Docker image here. So once we have created this Docker image, we're going to be storing this inside some kind of a container registry, let's say Azure container, Azure container registries. And within this Azure container registries, we are actually hosting our image that we have built. So how 
does this actually work with the proxy? So what we're going to be doing here, so in order for us to utilize the image that we have just built and stored in Azure Container Registry, what we need to do is we need to link our container registry to our Kubernetes cluster. And once we link it together, we can specify the information that we need. So basically what we'd have here is basically our source code, and I'm going to put this box here, will live inside all of these kubelets. So here I'm just going to put .NET and .NET. And basically these dot .NET is my dot .NET application and my container app running from that Docker image that I've just created from my from my source code. So this is where my application will run. So whenever I'm trying to create anything regarding my application in Kubernetes, the application will run basically inside the nodes. It will not run inside the control plane. The control plane is only for managing the Kubernetes cluster. The nodes is where actually the source code will run and basically we're able to see the application up and running. And this is basically it from a overview standpoint. This is the main Kubernetes cluster. This is how it works. These are the main components of it. And this is where our .NET application will come into place. In the next video, we're going to be seeing how we can actually run Kubernetes locally on our machine utilizing Minikube. We're going to be having a simple application which we're going to be deployed to Minikube and seeing how it's done there. And then we're going to be discovering some of the commands that Minikube will give us in order for us to mimic a real life Kubernetes cluster. So I hope this video was helpful. It just, it just has been a quick introduction about Kubernetes, about containers and how do they work within Kubernetes. If you have any questions, please make sure you put them in the comments down below. If you have any clarifications, please also put them in the comments down below. If you'd like to support me, please consider supporting me on Patreon or buying me a coffee. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a great day.